Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's Monday, March 27th, 2023, here for my weekly cross-stitching update. So we should jump right in because I have a good amount of stitching to share, especially plans. I won't be able to come back next week, so I've got two weeks worth of plans to share with you. Um, so let's get started. First off, I did manage to go by Hobby Lobby one more time, and this time the fabric was on sale as well that I've seen other people get at their stores. So that was fun. I didn't get a, a, a lot, but I did get two of these spa colored 32 count even weave, which is really pretty. I love blue fabric. So yes, please. <laughs> I could either do a not... I don't know. I don't like doing a full coverage on 32 over one um, because it's just a little bit too tight in my opinion, but other things I that have holes in with motifs and things I could do on this. So I'm excited about that. They were $1.24 each <laughs> and I got a yard or not quite a yard. It's like, it's a yard long, but like half. So it's probably a fat half of 28 count even weave for $5. Yes, please. This could do a um, full coverage <laughs> quite easily. So had to had to bring those home. But I left a few things there. So if there's other cross stitchers in my town, then we'll have some things. A lot of the kits were pretty much taken when I came this time. So I had gotten a few kits last time. When I came this time, there's like two <laughs> left. So um, they have been snapped up. So that's good. There are some other stitchers around here. Um, let's see. Let's start with travel stitching. My temperature Quaker is the one I've been working on this year. This is one of my designs. You can find that and many more in my Etsy shop. Getting closer to the end of March. Here is where I'm at. This is 25 count vintage cloth in the color prim. One over one full cross. <clears throat> and this gangly um, pot of flowers over here is almost done. I have this flower left and then the pot. So I'll get to finish that up next week. April, I mean, on the one hand, March has felt like it's gone on for a really long time. And the, on the other hand, it's like April's kind of sneaking up on me. I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, lots of still mostly blues and I mean, mostly purples actually this week. It's been cold again. A couple dark blues. Even the coldest color again, so crazy. Um, my husband had heard something about we are getting like some sort of cold weather pattern that's squashing our normal weather pattern around here. Because normally we're, this is the time of year that's beautiful that everybody else in the country is envious of where we have like 70 degrees and it's just like, just perfect. So we're cold and rainy right now. Um, and he fears that perhaps this cold front that's like settled over this area is gonna squash all of our perfect weather. And then once it lifts, we'll be going immediately into blazing hot and we'll miss our perfect weather window. So I hope not, <laughs> but we'll see. The temperature piece will not lie. Um, if it goes straight from blues and purples to like oranges and reds and skips the greens all together, I don't know, we'll see. That would be sad, but. All right, I did work on my um, Brooks Books Advent Animals. I'm doing Rudolph Reindeer for my second one of the month of March. I'm, I have two, I have these on my Whipco board, so I have two every month that I'm trying to finish. And here's where I got to. Um, I'm working from the top down picking symbols. So I'm almost, the top is pretty much done now, I think. So I need to finish him up uh, and then he'll be done. Not a, not too much left to go. Obviously a lot more in his face and some of his legs, his like belt, things like that. But a lot of it is finished. Um, this is 18 count light blue Ada, two over one full cross. With all the called for colors except for the border I'm skipping. Um, I had a good amount of travel stitching time on Saturday, but I was, I'm working on a customer project right now and I opted to work on that until I got to a certain goal. Then I would pull this out. I didn't get quite to my goal. I was like really close to finishing my goal. And then, and then my son was ready. I was waiting for him at a track meet. So I was like, oh, well, <laughs> 
but I should have possibly a little bit more travel stitching time this week and next week than I sometimes do. Just ex different, different, tra different school pickup times, different activities, everything. Um, so hopefully I'll get this done fairly quickly. And then I'll, I'll just show this now since we're talking about travel stitching. Then I can pull this out and work on my March goal for this, which is finishing the border around this top shelf, um, which is started but not finished. So this is where this is at now. This is on everything kit, potentially my oldest whip. So here it is, 14 count antique white Ada, two over one full cross. This was finishing this shoe and the ribbon was January's goal. This is this shoe was February's goal, and I finished that right at the beginning of March. Um, I'm hoping to finish this this year by doing a, a chunk every month. So this border around here um, is my goal for March. So I have the black in a lot of this already. There's also light gray in the holes, and then there's a back stitching line around the 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 outside of both. So. That's my goal. Hopefully I'll get to that. And I like having, I like being able to finish my goal and then come back to my Advent Animal Whip Go pieces um, like I did this month. So that might be what I'll do again where I get this finished before I jump back in um, to April's Advent Animals. So we'll see how that goes, but. Speaking of April's Advent Animals, the WIPCO numbers have been drawn. So if I manage to, since I'm gonna not come back for two weeks, I won't be able to come back next week. Life is gonna be crazy. My family is all home. <laughs> so I am gonna work on two, the two that were called were Pearly Pig and Odette Owl. I think I'll show you both of those just in case. I don't think I'll get to both of them, but I'm not sure which one I'll want to do. So here's Pearly Pig. And let's see. Oh, there she is. Here's my start on her. Did that one of those pink colors. And then Odette Owl was the other one, which I actually have a decent start on her. So here's what she will look like and these are by Brooks Books and they're still free on her website and this is my starting point on her. I believe I, I think I probably did the gray that first day I worked on these when I just put in one color on like a Christmas in July type of thing where I worked on one every day and then I did another thing for a prompt at some point. So then I filled in her head, which these eye colors ended up down here as well. So that's, I think, what happened there. So this has a nice, a bigger start on them than some of them do, which is kind of fun. So I'm not sure which one I will start first, but that's, those are the two that will be worked on here in, coming up in April, after I finished March's goal on Antique Shoe Collection. <laughs> So we'll see what I manage to get done in the two weeks before I come back and report. I also worked on flea market flowers while I talked with my sister and got Mar uh, March's gold done on this one, which is exciting. So this is flea market flowers by It's So Emma. You can find it on the Fat Quarter Shop and it might also be a PDF at this point. Um, I'm doing the called for fabric, called for floss, although I am doing mine one over one because that's what I like to do. So here is this one, 25 count vintage cloth in the color barley, one over one full cross. And this is the block for March. So I finished that flower and the center was the dark gray that, and then I went ahead and did the border and then I did some more border and did some more border. I did like two or three lengths of thread, including the um, the start of this flower, which is gonna be April's block, um, which is also the same gray color. The, the petals on this one are gray and dark gray and light gray, um, similar to this one with pink in the middle. So I gotta start on April even, so that's exciting. 
might as well get ahead because these three are kind of small, but the next few are a little bigger, so it doesn't hurt to get ahead. This is another one I would like to finish by the end of the year by doing a block a month. So that's exciting. I like that one. It's very colorful. Um, Monday, I worked on my honeybee for Mill Hill Monday, which had been a long time since I worked on that. But there was a first day of spring, spring into Mill Hill hashtag happening on Monday. So I thought, you know what? I need to pull this out again and participate. So I did. This is Mill Hill Buttons and Beads Honey Bee. And I had started this last year, I think, around the same time. I don't remember, but it's possible. <laughs> so I had fun working on this all day, not just for my afternoon stitching. And I got that whole flower done which is really fun, including the beads, all except for there's like four stitches in the center for the, the yellow and the flower. I didn't quite get to that. So the next time I work on this, I'll put those stitches in as well as, I think they're over here somewhere too, in the honeycomb. It says Mill Hill Monday again, so potentially I'll go ahead and do that yellow today, um, this afternoon if I have a chance. Um, and I think I'll also come over here and bring the background colors in so that I can work from the top down, do all the background from the top down. So honeycomb and flowers and everything. So that's really fun. Perforated paper, 14 count, two, two strands, and all the cold for everything. So that's really fun. It was fun to do that pretty flower on the first day of spring. Um, with this customer project um, that I'm working on, um, it kind of takes over my afternoon stitching. So I may not get to this today. It'd be nice to at least get that one length of yellow in, so we'll see. But um, we'll see what my afternoon looks like. I'll have more kids around. There's like half days and open houses and all sorts of stuff this week. So um, yeah, so speaking of not really having a lot of bonus afternoon time, I am supposed to work on this. <laughs> and I did twice. This week, only one length of thread, and it was a DMC loop start, so it was a shorter length than some of them, so I got one length of thread done. This not a whole lot to show for it. Um, I don't think that's the right one. Yes, it is. But it's something, so I'll show you, and hopefully sometime in the next two weeks, I'll get a little bit more time on this as well. But I do need to, to do my responsible stitching first, so. Um, this is where I got to on this one, and I this is 32 count water lily linen by Witchell, two over two full cross, call for fabric um, color conversion with the flosses. So this dark green, I think maybe here and here and then down here, the one length of green. So it's all of the green in this like swoop right here, and I think there might be some more brown. A couple more colors of light aqua then I can do some back stitching and beading in this thing and then all I'll have left is what's down here so still a good amount to go but I'm making progress <laughs> slowly but surely oh there is some more green down here too I think so I'm not quite done with that dark green color but that's as far as my thread took me okay any other bonus stitching? Not really. I think that's everything. So this week I worked mainly on Friends of the Library, which was my full coverage piece for the month of March. And this is one that I recharted in my pattern software um, from a Bucilla needle point kit. So it was not, I didn't scan it in or anything. I did symbol by symbol, um, took a while, <laughs> but I feel like it was worth it to be able to use Pattern Keeper. Um, here it is. Cause it didn't have a regular chart. It was just like blobs, like they do on needle point kits. But in this particular kit, the blobs were like kind of stair steppy. So I could most of the time count how many stitches should be in an area. So that was the only way I could 
convert this. There was another needlepoint kit that I had um, of a Christmas stocking a while back that I kind of just finished a section and called it good. Um, that was very blobby on the pattern. There's no way you could really tell how many stitches went where, and that's part of the problem <laughs> that I didn't like about it. Um, but this one was a little bit more structured of their, their blobs were more structured. <laughs> so I was able to convert it to um, squares and symbols and things in Pattern Keeper, stitch by stitch. So it was a long process. So here is where I got to. Not quite as much as I would have liked, but it's still something. So this is 18 count um, Antique White Ada, I think. Two over one, full cross. And overall, I mean, it was a really busy week. So I think that's mainly why I didn't get as much done on this as I was kind of forecasting in my brain. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get so much done. Nope. <laughs> But overall, the five days I worked on this, I got 1,017 stitches, so um, not, not, not too shabby. It's about how much I like to get done in a regular rotation. I was just hoping this would be, with a few extra days, I could get more than 1,000 stitches, but it was not meant to be. I did like working on it. It's kind of interesting working on big blocks of color. It's not necessarily my favorite. Some of them are really big blocks of color. So I'd prefer it when they're smaller blocks of color and I can see like see the whole book forming and that's kind of fun. Or that little glass bobble thing, you know, following them around the making the shape appear right away. That's kind of fun. Um, I just didn't have a lot of time. So that's the way it goes. Eventually, I'll get back to that one and do do more on it. After I was done with that one, I did one day on Cherry Kitten, which was my um, full coverage, no background pick for May or March. Just kidding. This is March. <laughs> the other um, month. So this is this one by Artisy. They have two versions of this and I got the no background version and I'm doing it on Pull Stitches Cosmos 28 count. One over one, full cross, and got one day on this, and and had more time on this particular day than I had any of the other days I was working on Friends of the Library, so I got a lot more stitches done on this one, even though it's more confetti, but what do you know? So this is where I got to in one day. This is, again, that pull stitches um, Cosmos fabric, one over one, full cross on 28 count, and I am going to stitch pick my symbols using my block by block typewriter method. So the, the top row is the top of this ear. And then I started in on the second row, which is where I got a lot of these head colors coming in. So I'll keep going over filling this in and then I'll come back here and do the next row, um, filling in block by block in a typewriter fast fashion where I pick a symbol, stitch it everywhere it goes, go back to that block, pick the next symbol, stitch it everywhere it goes. Um, so it'll be completed from the top down we kind of spread out <laughs> as I go, which is fun. 339 stitches on day one because it was a Saturday. I also worked on Friends of the Library a little bit that day as well to, to finish up a string I had. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So technically Friends of the Library came out six times, um, but the, that last day on Saturday, finishing my string was just 51 stitches. So it wasn't a full day's work. Um, yeah, so this one will come out again this week, Tuesday through Friday, for the last four days of its official rotation. Yeah, so it'll have a full five days as well. So you get to see more progress on that this week, hopefully. I'll get around to that. And then Sunday, I did seasonal Sundays, which is now, um, instead of my crosses, I chose to do Colors of the Seasons by Serenita di Campania which is an Italian company. You can find, I found this on one, two, one, two, three stitch and they have other ones too that don't have ladies. They just have like seasonal stuff. They're very cute patterns. Call for DMC. Um, everything is in Italian, but they do have like, they have an English word along here to, to say what it is. And you know by that number, how many stitches are in the back stitch or how many strands to use for the back stitch, things like that. Um, there's a chart for 
These are Italian charting words, but they have options for, I think, Spanish and English. Um, I opted to not do the words anymore because it was just too complicated <laughs> to chart. And I'd already screwed it up once, so I wanted to just be done with the... the um, be done with the words. So here is where I got to. I am very happy with my progress. I managed to finish um, winter. This is 27 count Linda in vintage country mocha, two over two full cross. And I managed, I will, we'll be frogging this out because it's, it's wrong. Autumn is correct. This heart in adjacent to autumn is correct, but I counted wrong off the heart. So all of winter is too far this way. It should be closer. This is a little bit too far over too. So rather than frogging all of this, <laughs> I'm just gonna frog the words and do all four without words. So I finished the white and there's some back, white backstitching on the snowflakes. And then there was some brown backstitching on some of her white bits and some green backstitching along his scarf. And his smile was brown too. So he's all done or this, this winter is finished. Then I came up here and did the painstaking counting to go up to start summer. And I'm leaving a little bit more of a gap in between up and down than I did side by side. So they don't look like they're standing on each other. Um, this was 10 stitches and I'm doing 20 stitches from the top of the snowflake to the top of these, um, to the bottom of these two. So started summer and I think that'll be nice. And, and because these are wider than they are tall. I think by having there be a bigger gap here, it'll make the whole overall finished a little bit more square. If I were to make this into a, like a large throw pillar, throw pillow or something. So that's kind of the idea there. So hopefully that works. Um, yeah, so this will come out again, I think in September for another four days um, to work on four Sundays in September to work on summer. So that'll be fun. This month I have a different one. So I'll show that here. I think I can get to plans now. Coming up in April. No, first off we have this week. So in addition to Cherry Kitten, I'm also working on my final family. I keep forgetting this one. <laughs> My final family Monday piece that I'll work on Dragon Ride here in today, the last Monday of March. So this is by Teresa Wensler. And I got this on Patterns Online a while back. Sadly, it's no longer available. Um, I think you can find it in a magazine, but I don't remember which one. Here is where I am on this one. This is 28 count MCG textiles. Even weave, uh, light blue. Used to be a Hobby Lobby. They have different different stuff now. This is a two over two full cross for the most part. The man is charted one over one. So um, I was kind of feeling like doing border this time. So I think I might work in the border. And I don't know if I'll color complete a color all the way around or just do try to do more um, complete complete sections because I, I love how it looks but like I did one little section a, a long time ago to kind of just see how it would look finished um, which is amazing of course um, but I do have a lot more to go in the border so I was kind of feeling border so I think that might be what I'll work on today and I might just pick a color and do it all around maybe the most common color and do that everywhere just see how far I get so so I'll work on that today, um, this evening, hopefully. And then Cherry Kitten the rest of the week until we hit April on Saturday. Then I will start my Focus for a Finish project for April, which is Spring Roundels by Barbara Jackson. This was a kit that went along with a class that I was gifted very generously by a stitchy friend. It came with the materials to stitch and finish all three of these. I started this one and at this point I think I'm just going to finish this one. Um, I don't need to start the other ones necessarily. 
there's it's exclusively specialty stitches so even though it looks like cross stitching and the stitches are like the same size as cross stitches they are different stitches so this is how far i am on this one it's called for it i think it's 32 count like cream linen of some kind it didn't say what kind of fabric it was but with some silks that were provided in the kit <clears throat> and so i'll get that finished up as soon as possible this month starting on saturday but then moving into next week tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday till i get it done hopefully it won't take me that many days um because I'm mostly done with it. Then my plan is to pull out my bonus fancy lady for as much time as I can next after spring roundel. So and and if it, like my original plan for these months is to have 10 days on a focus piece. And then if I finish my focus piece before the 10 days, I'll get myself a bonus project of one of my um, fancy lady projects and or do my fancy lady project with any extra days in the month. That's kind of the idea. I don't think it will. It should not <laughs> take me 10 days to finish spring roundels. So I'm hoping to give Enchanted Alphabet several days. That's my I didn't bring the pattern. I'll put a picture here of what Enchanted Alphabet is supposed to look like. It's a lavender and lace pattern. I left it downstairs. My thoughts, the last time I pulled this out, um, or maybe during my whip parade, I think I thought about this. I wanna take the girl out. She's cute, but I love this pattern for the alphabet. And I felt like I kept avoiding stitching her cause she's all in whites and grays. And it's kind of a meh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that pretty of a dress because it's all white. Um, so I decided to, and I think Dawn Frosty X Stitch gave me this idea. There's the way the pattern is, I could take the girl out and kind of squish the letters together and maybe move the bunny over into the little gap that's left. And I think I'm going to do that. So I'll still stitch the bunny. Um, she just won't be on a string to the little girl. And I already have the bird stitched. So this will be a lot quicker to finish because the girl will be gone. So potentially, I'm not guaranteeing this, but potentially I could finish Enchanted Alphabet this month as well. So we'll see. Here is my Enchanted Alphabet right now in the, in the possibility that I get to it to start working on it before I come back in two weeks. This is on, I believe, something tiny. I think it's 56 count. Society Time Linen by somebody. <laughs> Lakeside Needle Crafts, potentially. It was like a, a clearance fabric at Traditional Stitches a long time ago. And I'm like, ooh, this is pretty. This will look re work really well for this pattern because it's a garden and it's like a, a light, sagey green modeled. So all DMCs, all called for. It's really pretty. I love how they gradiate the... The colors, it's one over two full cross. I don't know if I said that or not. So the finished stitches, because it's little fabric and it's somewhat shrunk because of the dyeing process, I think the stitches are close to like a 25 or 28 count over two. <laughs> so um, it's little. So I'm hoping I can maybe at very least make some good progress on this this month. So. I do need to make time to kind of play with the pattern a little bit to take the girl out. So I'm hoping to get to that sometime this week. Um, so it's ready to go for April. Um, and Dawn over at Frosty Exit, she'll be working on this in April as well. So that's fine. Because this coming next Monday, I'll, my parents will be in town again. I don't want to worry about hiding Simpsons on Family Monday. So I'm going to flip flop what I would have originally done and do my son's piece this coming Monday on the 3rd, which is Visit Endor. I guess I'll show you the cover. Because that will be an easy one to get some stitches in if I have a few minutes here and there and I won't need to hide it. So this is by Country Magic Stitch. Only 11 colors. This is 
pretty simple. This is where this is at right now. 28 count Dove Gray Monaco, two over one half stitches. So if I get a chance on the third, I'll pull this out for stitching on that day. And, and then seasonal Sundays throughout April, <clears throat> which again, I'll have company this coming Sunday, but <clears throat> I'm hoping I will still have some time, a little bit of time at least, to work on this on that Sunday. And then we'll see more of it throughout the, throughout the month as well. But this week, next week, on the second, <clears throat> I'll be working on my spring montage by Janet Stever, uh, charted by Pain Free Crafts. I'll be working on this for five Sundays here in April, so that'll be fun to get some nice progress on this one. Um, so hopefully I'll get a little bit of time on the second. Probably not a lot, but maybe the other, other days will make up for it. So this is, I think, 28 count Mushroom Lugana, one over one, full cross. And there's my start. You can see some of the cherry blossoms beginning already. <clears throat> and so we'll see. Probably not a whole lot before I come back to see you, but this will be my Sunday stitch, sun seasonal Sunday stitch for the month of April. So that'll be fun. And I think that's, it. oh no, one more thing. I always forget this one. <laughs> April 1st is another first of the month. And so that means I will work on Finery of Nature during my bonus time, which this week is a Saturday. So hopefully I'll have a little bit of extra time in the afternoon. I can put a few links of thread into this. I started in the middle and I'm working my way up the side of this corner, this quadrant. So I started those um, blue flowers. I would like to do a couple more links of green in here. Um, and then I could do some gold metallic backstitching maybe, or I'll just keep moving over and work on the pink flowers. So we'll kind of see how I'm feeling. And what kind of time I have. Um, here is this one. Let's get some white in there. It might help. <laughs> Black always is hard to photograph. Um, but yeah, that's my starting point. And yeah, so if I have a little bit more green I could do in here and then maybe do some backstitching because it's all the back stitching and this is like gold metallic. So that's really fun or most of it. So then, or I could just keep going over here and do those pink flowers and the greens that are in the middle here. So we'll kind of see what I'm feeling. I'm using all the kit stuff. It's kind of crazy right now, but um, so pretty. There's a blend in here that's purple and blue and it's just so pretty. Very nice. So I'll work on that a little bit on the first to go along with um, the Sal started by E Crafting in Colorado. And yeah, so that'll be fun. I think I gotta go pick up my daughter for her half day today and hopefully I'll be able to work on things. Life's gonna be crazy, so I don't know how much I'll get on anything, but I'll do my best. <laughs> And with that, I hope you have a wonderful week. Happy stitching. Actually, a wonderful two weeks. And see you in two weeks. Happy stitching. Bye.